Hi there, my name's Andy and I work for the Pace Trust that does assemblies, RE lessons and lunchtime clubs in Paul, Bournemouth and Christchurch. I don't know if you've heard an old story, a fable um, about a hare and a tortoise who had a race. Now the hare shot off really fast and was running and looked back and saw the tortoise very slowly plodding forward. And the hare carried on running for a bit and then thought, I'm miles ahead of this tortoise. I can, uh, victory, I'm gonna win. What I'll do is I'll just relax in the sun. I'll have a cup of tea. I'll just chill out for a minute and have a little snooze. And while the hare, the rabbit was having a snooze, the tortoise kept plodding forward and kept on going. And the hare kept on snoozing. And what happened? The tortoise overtook the hare and ended up winning the race. The tortoise didn't look like it had a chance. But yeah, the tortoise won. I made me think about some stories in the Bible. In fact, the Bible often uses the idea of running a race as a picture for living our life with God, the sort of Christian life, if you like. And I want to talk to you about two very different characters that ran their race in a very different way. The first guy is a little bit like the hare. His name is King Solomon. He was um, the son of King David, who was Israel's greatest king. He was, you know, a very gifted bloke. And when God said, what can I bless you with to Solomon? Solomon said, I want the gift of wisdom to be wise. And he was a very good king to start off with. And he built the temple, which was a really, really important thing to have done. A really big honor. He looked like he was going to be amazing. Whereas Peter, or Simon Peter as he was at the beginning, he was a bit, well, he didn't do great really. He said the wrong thing. He did the wrong thing. He just looked like he hadn't got a clue. And yet, as Solomon carried on, he'd done so well, he then got married again. And then he got married again and again, and another wife and another wife. And he got lots and lots of wives. In fact, he got over 200 wives and lots of other girlfriends who weren't his wife. And he started to worship other gods other than the the God he was meant to be worshipping. He stopped following God. He stopped doing all the right things. And he took his eye off the race and completely stopped. There's a word called complacent, which means we think we're going to get there. We think we're going to win. And so we don't really bother to try anymore. The hare in the first story was complacent. Solomon started off so well and he sort of gave up halfway through. Simon Peter messed up a lot at the beginning and then he looked like he got it for a little bit. Jesus said, who do people say that I am? And Peter was like, Simon Peter was like, you, you're the Christ, which means the chosen one. You are the son of the living God. And Jesus said, Simon, from now on, you're going to be called Peter, which means the rock, which I always think of as that movie star, The Rock. But before, but Peter got there first. Peter was the original, the biblical rock. <laughs> and, um, and then just moments later, Jesus talked about the fact that he was going to be arrested and killed. And Peter blew it. He said, oh, that's not going to happen. That'll never happen to you, Jesus. And Jesus said, well, actually, it will. And told him off really badly. Later on, there's lots of times where it kind of went, oh, but either way, later on, lots of people started to leave Jesus. And Jesus said, well, are you going to leave too? And Peter said something really profound. He said, where else can we go? Because you, Jesus, have the words of eternal life. And right at, almost at the end, when Jesus is having the final meal with his friends, Jesus said again that everybody is going to desert him and leave him on his own. And Peter was furious. He was like, I'll never leave you, Jesus. I'll stick with you to the end, even if I have to die with you. 
but Jesus went and prayed in the garden and got arrested. And all his disciples, including Simon Peter, ran away. And Peter followed a little bit. And one person said to him, ah, you're a friend of Jesus, aren't you? And he's like, no, 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 I'm not. And then someone else said, are you a friend of Jesus? And he's like, no, no, never met him. Someone else said, you must be a friend of Jesus. You've even got the same accent as him. And he's like, I tell you guys, I have never met this Jesus fella. And just then a cock crowed in the background, which was a sign that Jesus said, when the cock crows three times, you will say you never knew me. And Jesus died on the cross and Peter was hidden in an upstairs room. He started off fairly badly. He'd done reasonably well, and then he completely blew it. It looked like he was out the game completely. There was a little rumour that Jesus had rose from the dead um, three days later, and, and Peter, to be fair to him, did go and have a little look, but he only saw some grave clothes. And then him and his brother Andrew went back home, went back to the beginning and started fishing again. And on that beach, he met Jesus. And Jesus asked him three times this question. Simon Peter, do you love me? And Peter was like, you know that I love you. And then Jesus said, well, tend my sheep, feed my lambs, which meant lead my church. And he said that three times. Peter, do you love me? He's like, yeah, of course I do. Well, go and lead my church. Uh, amazingly, Peter messed up and Jesus gave him a second chance. But the amazing thing is when Jesus went back to heaven, Peter preached the greatest sermon that maybe had ever been preached and 3,000 people became Christians and got baptised. A bit later on, he got people together, learning, discovering what it meant to follow Jesus, living together, living their lives together. And later on, he encountered a guy who couldn't walk with this other guy, John. And he said, I haven't got any money to give you, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus from Nazareth, get up and walk. And this caused, and this guy got up and walked. And this caused so much controversy. People got really angry, all that sort of stuff. It got messy. And yet Peter kept on leading the church and talking about Jesus. In fact, Peter became one of the greatest followers of Jesus the world has ever known. So what of us? What are we like? Are we like King Solomon, started off okay, full of gifts and good things, and then just given up a bit, really, just stopped, stopped trying? Or are we someone more like Peter, that maybe we've fallen over a few times, we've got it wrong a lot, but are we someone that's going to get up again and have another go? and keep on trying, even when we get it wrong, even when we fall, even when we stumble. As a Christian, I believe that God wants us to keep on going. And when we fall over and we mess up, I believe he helps us back up and gives us another chance. So should we just pray? Dear God, we pray that we'll be more like Simon Peter than Solomon. We pray that when we mess up, we'll get back up and have another go. And we'll get back up and have another go. We pray that we won't be complacent. We won't stop trying. We'll keep on trying our best to do all that we can as we try and follow you. Amen.